Welcome back to my channel, guys. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Glad to have you. So a few uploads ago, one of my subscribers asked me to do a video showing the logistics side of things. So with permission from the warehouse staff, I was able to do some filming inside the warehouse. So I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to pick up a load of apples from upstate New York and bring it back to North Carolina. So sit back and enjoy. And also guys, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated. You don't mind being on my YouTube vlog, do you? No. So I still have two more pickups, um, but this is just the first. So I'm getting a lot more pallets, guys. I'm getting five pallets, I believe, or seven pallets at the next pickup. I got eight from this one, seven from the next one, and then uh, the final pickup, I believe, I'm getting 11 pallets. So it's gonna be a full truck. It's gonna be a heavy load. So the big question, I know a lot of my viewers are gonna be curious. How do you guys keep these apples fresh? It's in a controlled atmosphere room. They take the oxygen out of the room, brings it down to 2%. Wow. Basically puts them to sleep. Apples will stay for a long time. Okay. But well, you take the oxygen out of the room, it keeps them fresher longer. And that's how they do it. The 2% oxygen, you, you can go in that room, you, <laughs> you're, you're done. done. You're wow. Done. So you guys don't go in that room. Not until we open it, we'll vent it out. So this morning, it was extremely cold, man. I mean, it warmed up a little now. The sun is out. You know, it's probably in the high 30s, maybe. But uh, this morning, it was down to single digits, so it was pretty cold. Guys, don't mind the hood of the truck, man. It's extremely dirty right now, you know. Uh, it snowed uh, two days ago, and I haven't left New York since, so. And it kind of snowed a little last night, a little bit of flurries, nothing too crazy. Uh, it didn't stick, you know, it was kind of windy, so it all blew away with the wind. time you guys see me duck down when I get to the traffic light that's because I can't see it with a drop visor going on on the 87 but uh apparently there's something going on
hoping I could get to my next pickup and get loaded and get out of there within an hour. Hello, Chris Brothers. Hey, I got a 6359 going down to Mabane, Walmart. You're here to pick up? Yeah, I'm at the little stop check-in side. Okay, you've been here before? It's almost done. I think we put on about five pallets so far, so two more to go. So these apples are going to Walmart, Walmart, D.C., in Mabane, North Carolina. So you're gonna see you on YouTube. Oh, good, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Open YouTube, I'll find it. All right, so we just gotta put up my load bars and secure this load. And even if I didn't put up my load bars, these ain't going nowhere. You know, these pallets are loaded sideways instead of long ways, so it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you want to be on YouTube too, huh? <laughs> All right, guys, so that's it. I'm on to the next stop. Well, my next pickup, which is all the way in North Carolina. So once I pick up in Hendersonville, North Carolina, I gotta make my way back across to Lebane, so should be alright though. Alright man, take it easy, alright? Have a good day. And this is what I love about going to these small farms. You know, for the most part, you get in and you get out. You know, you're not sitting there waiting around for five hours, you know, unless the product is not ready. So let me see where this thing is trying to send me, man, because I might do my own thing. All right, so it's trying to send me. Okay, all right, so there's an on-ramp to the 84 down there. That's fine. You know, because I came in right here. There's an on-ramp on right there. That's where I came off the freeway. There's also an on-ramp to get back on the freeway, so. But I, I guess it makes sense. Uh, this this road right here runs parallel with the freeway, so that's fine. should put me um, at the 205 in uh, Rafine, Virginia and that's what I'm trying to get to. I want to wash my truck in the morning. Good morning guys. Come and see you from Mount Jackson, Virginia. I'm at the Sheets exit 273. About to go get me some fuel. So I stayed here last night. 
um, shut it down right here. I did about six, six and a half hours driving yesterday and uh, shut it down right here. So get my morning started. So let's get it. All right, guys, so I'm not buying a lot of fuel here. I just bought about 465. Uh, that's enough to get me down into North Carolina. Um, the new sheets down in North Carolina, exit 100 there, uh, feels a lot cheaper. You know, it's almost 20 cents cheaper. And I have to go by there anyway, so that's where I'm getting fuel. Of course, I can't find my keys as usual. I gotta wash these gloves, man. These gloves are soaked in diesel. So every time I put these gloves on, my hands smell like diesel. And my hands are all slippery, so. I'm gonna wash these gloves when I go home. These are some good gloves. I don't wanna throw them out, so. I just bought them a couple months ago at the um, QT truck stop down in Charlotte. And uh, this is what I love about uh, the temperature outside right now. My reefer is set to 34 degrees and I don't think that reefer turned on not once last night. Uh, Cause the outside temperature is about the same as what the reefer is set for. And I wanted to stop and wash my truck guys, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. I gotta get to North Carolina before three o'clock. Um, that's what time they stop shipping at the final pickup. Uh, right now my ETA is probably about 12, 12.30. And if I was to stop and wash my truck, um, who knows how long that's gonna take, you know? Depending on how long the line is, how long it take to wash it. But I do need to wash, man. I got salt on my truck from the snow. And I definitely don't wanna park my truck like this. because I'm actually gonna be flying out to Texas um, Thursday morning. Uh, just a quick one day trip. You know, this is where balancing trucking and fatherhood comes into play. Uh, my daughter's senior night for track and field is on Thursday evening. So I've got an early morning flight to um, Dallas. So I'm gonna get there around noon. I'm gonna go do my daddy duties, you know, walk around onto the track for senior night as a proud dad. And Friday morning, I'll be back on a flight back to North Carolina. So I talked about it in a previous video, but um, I do have two older kids in Texas. My daughter is a senior in high school. My son is a sophomore. So, that's what my plan is for the next 24, 48 hours. Get this load off the truck, go park up on Wednesday. I don't wanna book any local load or anything on Wednesday because last thing I need is something to go wrong and I can't get to Texas. She would not be happy about that. All right, so I'm gonna put 300 on the tractor, that should do it. That's more than enough to get me down to North Carolina. I'm gonna put some on the reefer, because my reefer is less than a quarter tank. And no guys, I don't have an air leak. That's just a leveling valve, uh, leveling out, because I'm on a little slope right here. So I know somebody's gonna ask me, do you have an air leak? No, I don't. Uh, there's a little dip right here and the wheels are sitting up higher. So that's just a leveling valve doing what it does.
my fingers are freezing right now. It's cold outside. Uh, it was cold up in New York, but it's a little cold down here too. Uh, but I can't wait for it to be springtime again, man. All right, so let's get this back to half a tank. We did, and let's get out of here. I'm gonna take some. I did prepay for 465, but uh, I'm not gonna use it all. I don't need to. I always uh, get down to North Carolina. So I bought 89.7 gallons of fuel. So I'm gonna bump the idle and I'll uh, leave this truck running. I didn't get a chance to warm it up. But I never idle my truck without bumping the idle. You know, always bump the idle when you idle your truck, man. What's up, bro? I know he's cold, man. Cause I'm cold. So my next stop, gonna be in North Carolina. You know, unless something goes wrong along the way, um, I'll be getting off at exit 100 off the 77. So as soon as I go down the Fancy Gap Mountain, miss about the west coast man uh, the southwest you know, Arizona New Mexico up in Wyoming Utah you know, one thing I miss about going out west man is the beautiful scenery you know there's nothing like the scenery on the west coast or the southwest Arizona New Mexico uh, Utah, Wyoming. I miss the scenery out there, man. It's just so beautiful out there. You know, in the summertime, you know, sometimes I make a trip out there just to go enjoy the scenery. Southbound 121 over 9. He got a big truck down on the shoulder southbound. And of course, most of these guys ain't got no radio in their truck, anyways. Virginia State Trooper like to hang out over here, so gotta watch your speed. And uh, sure enough, there he is right there in the middle. Hey, 
120 over 9. You got one sitting in the middle, drivers. 120 over 9, one sitting in the middle. Come on, man. Drive this little car, man. Let's go, man. Let's go. Just met one of my subscribers inside, which is pretty cool, man. I love when I come out and I get to meet you guys and interact with you guys. You know, I'm never too busy just to at least stop and exchange a few words. And uh, I'm kind of rushing right now, but I still stopped and talked to him for about two minutes, you know, so. When y'all see me out and about, guys, don't be afraid to come up to me, man. Very approachable. There he is right there, matter of fact. Walking back to his truck right now. I believe his name is Ernest, I believe. But yeah, man, this is definitely my new um, fuel stop right here. Uh, it's the cheapest around right now. This truck is dirty, guys. Look at this truck, man. But unfortunately, I couldn't stop to get a wash, so. Gotta keep it moving. All right, y'all, so I'm on the home stretch. Got some fuel. And I should be at my destination in about, um, I would say about two, two and a half hours from now. Every time I walk behind my trailer, man, this is depressing. The other day I dropped my trailer at a facility. You know, it's a drop yard, so we couldn't go back there. And sure enough, man, the yard jockey ripped off my mud flap and uh, bend this bar and it's kind of broken right here. So got to get it fixed. And uh, this is why I don't like going into facilities that force you to drop your trailer. So basically, I dropped my trailer and I was waiting for it. And they bring it to another location about five miles down the road and they load it and then bring it back to you. I was picking up fresh chicken, by the way, so. I wasn't too pleased about it. All right, guys, so I'm basically pulling up but I saw a sign back there saying road closed so through traffic, so I don't know how far I have to go before the road is closed, but my destination is one mile down the road. So we shall see.
is your apple is going to Walmart. perks of hauling produce you know you go to the farms orchards they hook you up man so Mario appreciate the apples my guy so I'm gonna be munching on these for the next couple days man so this has probably been my longest recording to date I started this video two days ago and um, wrapping it up today uh, so last night, um, after I picked up in Hendersonville, I went home. I wanted to go to this high school basketball game. Uh, the school that my kids attend, you know, it starts at preschool all the way up to high school. It's a private school, and my kids play basketball at the school, so they are in the basketball program, you know, working their way up to the high school level. So the boys and the girls varsity played last night in the state tournament semifinals. The girls lost, but the boys came out victorious. So I was in the house, you know, cheering them on. Um, now I am up in Midbane, North Carolina at this Blue Beacon. Uh, Walmart is about three miles behind me. My appointment was for 4.30. I checked in last night at 3.50. I checked in with little less than half a tank of fuel in my reefer and yes guys walmart turned me around and told me i had to go get some fuel in my reefer you know i had between a quarter and a half a tank but closer to a half a tank and especially now with the temperature outside that's more than enough fuel to last me at least 36 hours but yeah, they told me I had to go get some fuel. So by the time I got back, it was 4.25, my appointment for 4.30. Uh, by the time I made it to the window, I was technically late in their system, uh, 4.44. So um, I did get unloaded around six o'clock. They called me, but I ignored them. I was sleeping. They called me a second time. I picked up the phone. I said, hey, I'm on my way. Two hours later, I walk into the office. I was tired, man. Needed my sleep. You know, you don't need a door, so don't be rushing me now. So yeah, I got my paperwork back, and I just came down to this blue beacon, trying to get my truck washed. You know, I'm still dirty from riding in the snow up in New York, so I'm taking today off. I'm not gonna risk it. You know, I'm just gonna wash my truck, go home, park the truck, and go prepare myself for Texas. I'm going to give myself a haircut when I get home um, and just go pack my suitcase. You know, I'm only going for a day because the boys actually play tomorrow night uh, in the state championship. So I'm going to make it back tomorrow. So I'm literally going to Texas for 24 hours. I'll be back in time to go catch that game, you know, go cheer them on. So yeah, uh, we roll out to the game as a family, you know, it's time we get to spend together. You know, the kids get to go hang out with their classmates, watch the game, eat some food. You know, the concessions open. They like to go get their burgers and hot dog and chicken wings, you know, and I love the game of basketball. So yeah, last night was a pretty exciting game, man. I went basically two hours out of my way to go watch a game and two hours back this way so a total of four hours I went out of my way but it was well worth it man um, a lot of action uh, they got a really good
squad, man. I believe they have a couple D1 prospects, so yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to the game on Friday. Uh, the team they're playing, they actually beat them for the league championship a couple weeks ago, and they have a pretty good um, team also. They have a 6'9 dude who's uh, going D1. He was just dunking on everybody the last game. But we got some dudes who could dunk too. Um, shout out to Miles, man. Miles, I believe his last name is Smith, class of 2025. He put he put on a show last night, man. He brought the house down. Crazy put back dunk. He's only 6'4, but that boy could get up. Yeah.